Because this movie, like, if you go back and watch the original, it wasn't just about the movie, the soundtrack, everything. Obviously, you wrote the lyrics, Jay wrote the lyrics for yeah. Bugs on that. Do you remember doing that, by the way? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, and I was in Sony Studios. Really? Acting like a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, how do you, when you write for other people, I don't know if you do it anymore, but when you used to do it, how do you get, like, still DRE is one of the greatest written songs ever, not rap. But you actually write it exactly how Dre would speak. How do you channel? Because you have to be that character to yeah. write for them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But on that reference track, I'm doing Dre and Snoop's wow. vocals wow. like that. Wow. Like, <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Still. The, vote, the, the reference track, it sounds like them. The Foxy reference, I'm glad nobody can find out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but um, yeah, but you gotta have a somewhat like a, a reverence for them. Like uh, obviously, like you know, the, the music they were making and the chronic and all that. You know, in, or, in order for me to like really like nail, get the essence of uh, Dre and Snoop, had to be like a, a studied reverence of you know yeah. what they were doing to, to say like even put myself in their shoes. Think about that record. So that record came after. Um, Dre leaves death row. It was all about reminding people. Yeah, how my last album was the chronic. That's one of the best lines in hip hop. What's going on, guys? I'm glad I found this clip of Jay Z talking about how he had to put himself in the mindset of first of all Bugs Bunny when he was doing the song for the soundtrack of Space Jam, and then also kind of talking about how he was able to write a song like Still Dre of the famous uh, 2001 album for Snoop and Dr. Dre, write both of their verses and what he had to do to get into their mindset and you know how that sort of came about. But I want to make this video about how to become a writer because uh, in our NDR's Accelerator this question comes up a lot. Like how can I become a writer for certain artists? How can I get writing credits on bigger projects? Things of that nature. So because I found this clip, I want to sort of break that down. Uh, talk about the different genres of music, the different approaches, the different mentality, uh, I guess, you know, aspects you got to get into to be able to write effectively for different audiences. So let's break all that down. What's going on, guys? My name is Matei. Another day from Music Biz Daily. For all of the YouTubers out there that watch my videos, I really appreciate you guys. Make sure you continue to give me feedback, like or dislike the video, you know, drop whatever you feel like you want to talk about in the comments. Also, if you want me to do a video on a particular topic, leave a comment, please. And for that reason, make sure you hit the subscription button. Make sure you also hit that notification bell so that way if I end up covering the topic you requested, you get notified when I drop the video. In the description below, you can check out what me and my team do specifically. Check out the Indie Artists Accelerator. And uh, also check me out weekly on Twitch with Clinton Sparks. I'm on all of his shows talking about the music business with him all the time. It's a great dialogue, great exchange. You're gonna learn a ton in there. But let me get into this video talking about how to potentially become a writer in these different genres and what Jay-Z just said in the clip that you saw. So you're in that short clip that, first of all, Jay-Z kind of, you know, hints at the fact of what he had to do uh, to get into the mindset of like a Bugs Bunny character type thing when he was, you know, doing the soundtrack song for Space Jam back in the day. And also how he approached writing for Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, right? Like he had to know them to a certain extent. He had to know you know, what they would potentially say. He had to know their history. He potentially had to put himself, his men, like, you know, mental state into how they may be feeling at the moment for writing uh, or, you know, rapping on a particular song, what sort of verse would uh, accommodate that particular artist. And you gotta, you know, have a certain skill set to be able to do that, especially writing in hip hop in order for the artist that you wrote it for, for them to, you know, sort of look at the lyrics, look at the verses and say, yeah, man, look, 90% of this, I'm down with it. I'm just gonna, you know, change a few words here and there, but I'm down with this, let's do it, let me, let me do this verse, right? But let me kind of talk about what you could do as a writer and how you can penetrate a different industry because the genres are different. Look, at the end of the day, in something like a pop or like an R&B genre, uh, artists embrace having other writers on their songs. You know what I'm saying? They almost talk about it famously, like Beyonce may talk about how excited she was to work with a particular writer, like Neo, for example, on the song and how their collaboration happened, the chemistry in the studio, you know, what, what they were thinking about in order uh, to put the song together in the way they did. You know, in the pop world, it happens even more often in country, same thing, you know, probably gospel is very similar. Um, but in, in hip hop, 
the genre is completely different in terms of like the, the mindset of the rappers, right? Uh, in, in rap, like the individual artist definitely is more about the lifestyle, the particular artist, their swagger, their, you know, how they handle themselves, what they talk about, uh, where they came from, you know, everything about them has to be pretty particular. So it's not as easy uh, to write or to penetrate as a writer. And on top of that, because, you know, rappers as artists are such individualistic, you know what I'm saying, brands, as compared to some other like, you know, pop, uh, you know, mega pop brands, which all of them like are sort of very similar. Yes, it's always, you know, ends up being about the personality of the artist, but for the most part, hip hop is very unique in a way that it's, it has to be authentic, you know, for most rappers to do what they do and how they, you know, come across. So from that perspective, they don't like to talk about the fact that they had any writers on the track, you know, so it's like, it's like taboo. You see this all the time, like no rapper wants to admit that they had a ghost writer on the track, whether it's for a hook or definitely not on the main verse. Maybe if they're going to admit anything, they're going to talk about the hook was written by somebody, but definitely not a verse. But you notice that these moguls uh, in the rap industry like Diddy, Dr. Dre, you know, Snoop Dogg, um, Jay-Z even had stuff written for him, just, you know, Timberland, just different like level of artists. Once they sort of mature or are in the industry for a number of years, they realize that shit, like why wouldn't I collaborate with other great minds on the particular track to get it written? And I guess if you're a young artist in the, in the hip hop rap genre or trap, like why not learn from the greats? Like maybe embrace having ghostwriters on your tracks in the beginning. I'm not saying you have to, you know, let, let your fans of the industry know like, yeah, man, I use ghostwriters all the time. Um, and you know, this wasn't even me that wrote it. Obviously you don't want to do that, but there's a way to negotiate that in the contract. And if you are somebody in the hip hop industry that wants to be a writer and doesn't want to be an artist, the best way to sort of approach that is to hang around producers, for example, at major studios or producers that work with up and coming artists that you know that the artists and their teams are putting some solid money and resources behind blowing that artist up. Obviously, if you're in a city like New York, Atlanta, you know, or LA, it's, it's uh, much better to be in those towns because it's more likely that bigger rap artists are sort of, you know, come into certain studios where you can become friends with the producers and, you know, kind of start, you know, involving yourself and maybe getting your hooks rapped by the particular artist or maybe even introducing a particular verse for a particular rap artist. You know, you got to make those relationships first. Whereas in the pop, country, and R&B industry, it's slightly easier. And I say that because, for example, Nashville is a city where they have, is known for, you know, obviously country pop and R&B, hip hop is starting to emerge in Nashville as well but it's known for the culture of writing. Like they have writers clubs, the people, writers for music meet up at, you know, coffee shops, Starbucks, they have particular meetings. Obviously during COVID that's slightly changed and a lot of things went online to different platforms like Clubhouse or Reddit has a lot of, um, you know, uh, blog or forums on for writers and engineers and things like that. So again, you have to understand the genre, but in that industry, it's slightly different and it's much easier to get on as a writer, but you still, making friends with a producer that consistently works with artists that are either up and coming or major artists and being able to create that relationship, get your reference song in front of somebody that helps. For pop, R&B and country, also as a writer, you may have to get out of your comfort zone and even if you can't sing you know, as good as uh, these major A-list artists or up and coming artists in that genre, you may have to have the engineer use auto-tune, but ref having reference tracks, you know what I'm saying, it's preferred in that particular genre in that industry. Whereas in rap, if you want to be a writer, like I said, if you make a relationship with the artist or a producer that works with a lot of these artists, you can do that on the spot. You can hear a beat and adapt different rhymes to different beats because a lot of times the songs sort of happen differently. Um, and they're very particular and unique to the artist, just like Jay-Z talked about. Whereas in pop, a lot of times you can make a love song that's sort of general. It speaks to any fan. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be a personal story from Beyonce's life or from you know, uh, Lady Gaga's life or from Megan Trainor's life. It doesn't have to be so personal, whereas in rap, it's more authentic and fans want the more personal story if a you know, bigger artist is gonna do something. So I just wanna talk about that aspect because a lot of uh, people in the Indie Artist Accelerator, like I mentioned, ask me all the time, how can I become a writer? How can I get writing credits? And being a writer is a lot of times a great way to get started in the industry a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? You have to think about like how can you really get on as an artist? There's so many different ways, so many different, you know, strategies. Uh, one I want to mention specifically, like when I well, finished reading the Mariah Carey book, I don't know if you guys knew, but Mariah Carey is 
as awesome as a vocalist and talented as a vocalist she is, and she lived in New York City, one of the mega cities for music, period, she didn't even start off as a main lead vocalist, right? She was singing since like 11 or even earlier than that, about 14 professionally going through studios, doing commercials, but the way she really penetrated into the industry was that she started networking with the background vocalists, the ones that do, you know what I'm saying, the background vocals or the different like higher, lower octave, you know, layers and harmonies and things like that. That's how she got started until she built enough networks and producers and executives to where it made sense for her to be the main headlining artist and write her own songs, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, being able to be a writer is a great way to do it. Jay-Z kind of touched upon it. I'm glad I found that video. And I'm kind of, you know, we'll leave it at that. Uh, if you guys want to know more about this, we have classes on this. We got live Q&As at the Indie Artist Accelerator where we touch up on these topics. And the, the, the members in there, always bring awesome ideas, even contacts, and even ideas, because you know, we got people from all around the U.S., matter, matter of fact, from all around the world in there, giving different ideas of how to do it, and how to get into these different networks, and what to do to be successful in these different facets of the music industry. So make sure you join that, but I'm gonna leave you with that. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and as always, I will see you all tomorrow for another day of Music Biz Daily. Until then, peace.